Welcome to Spartan Up Podcast. I'm Dr. L, Chief Mind Doc. We're here recording at Fenway. We've got lots of racers behind us. I'm here with two of my fellow podcasters, Johnny Waite, Colonel Nye. It's Thank a pleasure you. to be here. So today we've got Christine Lilly, awesome lady, and like super, I was just going to swear, which I realize I can't do. Should I just keep going? Sure. <laughs> yes, yes, sure. yes, you yes, should. Go. Retired American soccer player, gold medal winner, right? Gold cup, right? Right. She's won it all. Yeah, yeah I mean, ma- many, all things. many would consider the greatest soccer player in history in terms yeah. of, uh, she talked about caps. She has more caps uh, representing the national team than anyone in history in any country. And, and what does that mean, caps? Uh, that when you play a game representing your team, they, your country, they give you a cap, literally a cap. A cap. An actual hat. And, and so she's is... been capped more than anyone in the history of time. So she's played more games than anybody else. Yeah. Really, that's, that's amazing. And, and took some incredible lessons from it. That, that's the really neat thing. Um, what we're all about at Spartan Up Podcast is finding these incredible people from all walks to life, bring them together, interviewing them, and seeing what we can draw from their experience to share with our viewers and our listeners. So that's every Tuesday. We release a new episode. Um, Wednesdays, you've got your own. That's my game, right? So Wednesday's Spartan Mind, where I dive into the mental part, the mental game, try to get that junk outside of your head. And that's like a quick hit, right? Quick, yeah. Like two-minute videos, just super easy stuff that you can listen to, integrate, live in your life. And then Thursdays... Your buddy. Big Zach. Zach Evanish, the uh, soul lifter, power lifter. Motivator, and he's got the Spartan way. Yep. And that same thing. I, does he get it done in two minutes, or is he a little not longer? much longer? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. to talk a little bit. He has like well, to talk habits, in a good like way. Concrete right. things that you can wake up and do tomorrow. No, no. Yeah. Well worth the listen. Come back at the end of this episode. We're going to talk about what made Christine great and what we learned from her. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Fit Aid. Recovery for your active lifestyle. Each ice cold can of Fit Aid contains key ingredients like BCAAs, glutamine, turmeric, omega 3s, and more. Race dirty, recover clean with Fit Aid. Visit forthefitaid.com and sign up to win an amazing grand prize package from Fit Aid and Spartan. Monthly Spartan prize packs and more. Fit Aid, recovery for your active lifestyle. All right, we are here at Fenway with Christine Lilly, superstar. Basically, you're a superstar soccer player. Do I say soccer or football? You can say soccer. I'm okay with that. U.S. is soccer. Everywhere else is football? Correct. And you've been part of the U.S. What? U.S. soccer team for 23 years? 20, uh, yeah, 23 years. You've been playing for 23. You still playing? No. Oh. I wish. I wish I was. Not. And you scored like 130 goals in your career? I did. I did score 130 goals. So is it, is it, is it easy? It's an easy game? Or what's the, what's <laughs> yeah, just like these sports. It's, it's easy. Just, it's it's just easy. easy. You just go out and just go ahead yeah. and do it. I mean, it, it's uh, if you love the game, it's great. Um, and, and the more you practice and the more you train, it becomes easier. But it's never easy. It's always work. Um, but fun work if you're enjoying well, well, what you're doing. Women's soccer wasn't that big when you when you got into it, right? No, I was. Uh, I made the team in '87 when I was 16, and it was about two years old at the time. So I kind of grew up with the game, um, growing the game. When it's where, World where'd Cup. you grow up? I grew up in Connecticut. Okay. Um, and we traveled the world. And, and, and were you addicted right away? You just loved it. I loved it. I loved. You know what I loved? Orange slices at halftime. It was, it was all about the orange slices. It was all about the orange. So how many you could put in your mouth? You know they have orange juice. You could have just bought well, I knew, but it was more fun. <laughs> <laughs> the orange slices. Thanks for that. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I loved it. My brother played, so I, whatever he played, I, I played bass. I had played hardball. Hardball was my first love. And then, uh, but soccer was something I kind of excelled at, and I enjoyed being out in the field, meeting friends. And Were you good right away? I was pretty athletic. Huh. I played with the boys. That's why. And your old brother was older. And my brother was older. Four years. He used to beat me up. I remember, um, so my wife was a soccer player. We're going to call her. It'll be yeah, funny. Yeah, she, like doesn't, she doesn't know we're doing this podcast. And um, we had children. We have four children. And our oldest was probably four or five. And she tried to play some soccer outside in the backyard in Vermont. And he didn't want to play. And she starts crying. She's like, my kids, they don't like. And so I call my dad because I never had children before. I don't know anything about <laughs> soccer. And, I'm, and he goes, well, does you, Courtney play with them every day? And so I, no. Well, then how is the kid going to like soccer? Right, so I think you have to be around it. You, you have know? to be around it. Someone's got to be doing it for you to see it and, and like fall into it. My brother played, so I wanted to do it. Um, I used to go out in the yard and juggle and I'm play with my dog. And How many like juggles that. could you do as a kid? Because that's like a big thing. Now. Like they're, they're, it is. They're pumping out uh, the, girls, I mean, girls I mean, now. All the kids I coach now, they ask me, and I just, I'm like, a thousand. Make up something. Got but it. over in, in the hundreds. 
Wow. Because that's what I'm hearing. Like, there's teams here in the Boston area yeah. where you can't play on the team if you can't do, like, 500 juggles or something. Oh, that's a strict one. That's right? A, that's that, tough. That's a little, yeah, that's yeah. tough. I'm not let's sure if I can my, make that team. Let's call my <laughs> wife, and we'll have some fun with her if she answers. Let's see. That would, she that might would not be answer. Fun. She's taking care of the this, kids. This would be second. Second timers. Second time. You called her on the show. Oh, the monk. I called her with the monk. That's right. <laughs> the monk. Because the monk wanted to know if I was happy or not. Hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing good. Listen, you're on a podcast. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> really? Yep. Yeah. We're, we're with Christine Lilly, U.S. soccer team, 23 oh, years. No way. She's so awesome. She is like my hero. Oh. So good, Joe. Are, are you really, is she really there? She's yeah, right, hi, She's hi right there. next to me. And she thinks I'm awesome, by the way, just so you know. Oh, my God. Please. <laughs> if, if his head gets any larger, I won't get him through the door. I, mean, I love him, but... By, by the way, oh you're amazing. Christine Lilly is so amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. By the way, she scored 130 goals. Mia Hamm did 150. Abby yeah. Abby Wambach did 184. How many did you do? I did so many. Like, <laughs> not as many as I remember going to, I think I was 10 years old, and I was at UMass Amherst for a a state, a Massachusetts yep. state OEP regional yep, that's what I uh, heard, yeah. week, and I think you were there, and I think Mia, Julie Saudi was there, and I think Mia Hamm was there, and you guys were probably in your 20s, maybe, and you were, like, really young and awesome. And you really young, I like that. Like, I distinctly remember, it was one of, like, the best things ever, and I remember watching the documentary years later about you guys, and how you were always so accessible, and, and I, I knew that was true. That's super sweet. I'm so glad you remember me. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard but, not to. You guys are, like, famous and forged the way, so that, it's that, pretty cool. Yeah, well, the 90s, late 90s, mid-90s were a lot of fun times, growing the game yeah. and, and winning. Any question you want to ask Christine before um, I hang up on you and I get, because she really wants to focus on me? <laughs> I know, I know. My, my question would be, where do you send your kids to soccer camp? To my camp. <laughs> she got her own camp. <laughs> What's it called? Well, I have my own camp, uh, Christine Lilly Soccer oh. Academy in Connecticut, but then I do uh, Team First Soccer Academy camps with Mia Hamm and Tish Venturini from the 99 team in college. That what I'll crazy. do, I'll connect you with my friend Christine Lilly for it. And, um, <laughs> next summer, Gord, I have one next summer I'll in set, Medfield. I'll set you up with a camp I'm or two really for the kids. Joe, you're really onto something good. You're getting really good people. I'll see you. So. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Love you. Bye. Bye. That was good. I love it. I don't know much about soccer so i apologize that's but, um, okay it's, it's but you seem awesome but you need a lot of endurance you need a lot of endurance need to, how much do you run in a typical game they say they uh, the midfield so the midfield runs a lot yep and they probably say six miles average okay six to seven miles per maybe forwards are a little less but they do a lot more sprinting what what uh sport or what athletic endeavor would you take on to uh, enhance your soccer game any like sport. You, um, I played yeah. basketball. I played uh, baseball because in hand, hand eye coordination, heading the ball, right. basketball movement, and uh, and I'm a st- huge believer in multi sports for kids because they all be- they all help. I make my kids do kung fu, wrestling, hockey. Love it. It's all good. I right? think it's all fantastic. My yeah. husband's trying to get our girls into boxing. Why don't we take a break and why don't you and I box for like, a little while? Bring it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> We're going to be right back to this great interview after a quick note from our sponsor. It's Fit Aid, Tim, which we're drinking as we record at Fenway. At Fenway. I'll tell you, what a great combination, right? For uh, hallowed halls of baseball here, for me at least, and for many, many, many uh, baseball fans, uh, combined with a great recovery drink, a great uh, focus drink, yeah. uh, and a great sponsor or sponsor and partner of, of Spartan. Yeah, and we've got our stadium race here this weekend. At the end of the race, every single racer is handed a Fit Aid. And you know why? Because it's not really an energy drink, it's a recovery drink, right? Their parent company, Life Aid, is about wellness. And um, I started drinking these in Tahoe at our, uh, right. you know, we were out there for the World Championships a while ago. I love them. It's, it doesn't have that energy drink jolt or that, that taste, that kind of bitterness. Right. It actually tastes really good. Yeah, I, I don't know how long they worked on this combination or what, what chemists they put together in a room, but they nailed it, right? Yeah. You pick that up, and it, it goes down smoothly, yeah. and, it, and it does. It kicks right in. 
you can feel it. And because it's I'm really not, nice. because I'm not a, uh, I, and even chemist isn't the word because there's no chemicals in this. There's no, that's probably, there's yeah. no added sugar. There's no artificial colors. Right. And it's it's all the things it's supposed to be. It's paleo. It's non GMO. Food, it's food kosher, engineer, it's whatever the right vegan. term would be. Then. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. So uh, you know what? I'm not a food engineer. You're not a food engineer. But if you want to taste the great things these food engineers made. Go to ForTheFitAid.com. You'll find out more about this. Race dirty, recover clean with FitAid. Visit ForTheFitAid.com and sign up to win an amazing grand prize package from FitAid and Spartan. Monthly Spartan prize packs and more. Hey, Spartans, we really will be getting right back to the best part of this interview with Christine Lilly. But first, get the new year off right with 31 weeks of new Spartan healthy habits. Hey Spartans, hope you're enjoying the podcast. I'm Anne LaRue and we're going to be going over 31 habits of the healthiest Spartans. So let's start with habit number one. First off, I don't want you to change anything about what you're eating. Instead, I want you to focus on your eating window. What an eating window does is it allows a daily intermittent fasting period, and that also helps to avoid probably that late night snacking that you may be doing. So to start closing your eating window, you're really going to look at either an 8, 10, or 12 hour. So 8 hours, 10 hours, or 12 hours that becomes your guideline of when you're eating. The best option, try to keep a small 8 hour window. So if you start eating at 11 a.m., you're done at 7 p.m. If that's challenging for you, stretch it out to a 10 hour, and at most stretch it out to a 12. Try focusing on that, eating the same foods that you already are, and you're already building habit number one. Let's get back to the podcast. It's going to turn into a black eye, I think. I think I think you hit me pretty hard. I got, I got yeah. you good, right? You're yeah, just yeah. competitive. Like it I did, think my foot might have got you. <laughs> you are you. You've always been competitive. Always been competitive. Board games when I was younger. Um, my kids now, I, I can't stand to lose you know, a board game with them or cards. So we were on the beach once with my wife and a bunch of kids, and the soccer ball came out. Yeah. And I was sitting down, and uh, she starts to play with them. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it turns into like competition. Next thing I know, she's knocked all the kids over, and she's <laughs> going to score. So you got your own nuts. Yeah. Well, come on. You, you, you're competitive. <laughs> yeah, but not, like, I'm not going to knock over seven Well, I think I mean. you're kind of exaggerating that just a little bit. Um, no, but it's funny when people will ask, do you still play? And I say no um, because I, ca- I can't just play for fun. I mean, granted, we, I played my whole career. We enjoyed what we did and we loved what we did. But once you get out there and you try to do it just for fun and then some, you get scored on, it just immediately clicks. Like, okay, I'm it's on. on. It's on. Yeah. So the competitive nature comes out and it's a healthy competitive what um so for for the folks out there listening and watching yeah. right we want to teach them resiliency grit how to be more motivated what can we learn from 23 years of playing and getting so close to Mia Hamm's number <laughs> of goals what could we learn from that Ah, oh, keep trying, keep trying. <laughs> um, no, Mia was an incredible player, um, and she was a forward, so she was closer to the goal. Um, and she wasn't running all the way back, so come got on. It, um, I love you, Mia. Um, but I think, it, I mean, when I talk about being on the, the team for 23 years, I, I, I was a starter for most of the, I mean, 23 of those years, and I think you you got to have the mentality, you got to have the desire, and you got to know that everything matters. You know, your training at home matters, your training when you're with the team pushing each other it matters at that level, and you got to keep going. And if you want to be the best, and you have that inside you, then but you have bad days and bad weeks. What do yeah. you do? You stay bad. You no, know, see, there you go. So you have a bad day. You got teammates to make it better. Right. So you still got to get up. I remember I grew up in Connecticut in training in the off season when I wasn't with the team. Winter days, I was like, oh gosh, okay. Driveways clear, anywhere's clear. I do, go do my running, come back, and and. Is there ever? Down. That's an interesting point, right? For somebody out there listening, it, was there ever a bad workout? Like, oh, like, yeah, tons. No, no, no b- bad before it starts, but when it's over, you're always, like, oh, there's, yeah. right? There's never a bad workout in that respect. Exactly. In right? that respect, when you do it, like, I, I was always one of the fittest players on um, my team, and everyone, some of the players were like, well, it's so easy for you. I'm like, easy? Hell no, it's not easy. You know, but when I did, uh, every little bit of training made it easier. Right. It was always difficult, but bleed, it made Bleed easier. in the training, so it's Yeah, and I, I didn't right? love it. I don't, I went running today, and it was an awful, and I felt terrible at the end of it, but I was done. And my husband's like, good job. And then it's a good workout. And it's a good workout because you finished. It's over. You did it. Yep. You did something to make yourself feel better in the end. So good accountability with teammates, mm-hmm. right? Would they come over, like, if you weren't in the mood or whatever? Or it's, no, you go, I mean, you got to go to practice. I mean, you got to go. You, know, you, you want to be on the team. You don't get to call in sick. Right. Um, and, no, but they can tell if you're having a down, if you're off a little bit. And they're like, come on, let's go. 
Right. We need you. Step it up. Let's let's do this. Because I think the great thing about being in a team sport is you're not alone. So even your good days, it's escalated. Your bad days, you're lifted. Right. And I think that's one of the things I loved about being on the U.S. team is you it ele- that. Well, it elevated everybody's game, right? Yeah. Being around great players. Yeah, and, and like-minded. Like yep. everyone, we weren't, like, there wasn't, Mia wasn't like, oh, maybe we'll be second, you know, this year. No, yep. we're going to win. Everyone had the same mentality. They, they wanted to compete. They wanted to be better. They wanted to push each other. And that kind of environment just makes... Elevates everybody. There's this um, blog out there called Will It Make the Boat Go Faster? About a rowing team that that wanted to win gold. And they talked about, like the coach said, listen, every decision we make, we're going to ask ourselves, will it make the boat go faster? Mm -hmm. So did you guys... Was it that kind of mentality to play at that level? Like, hey, guys, let's go get ice cream. Like, ice cream's not getting us closer to goal. No, but when you have to run like seven miles, it's okay to get a little ice cream. (laughs) (laughs) No, but but every that we were, it was all like, what was, what are we going to do? Is this choice going to make me a better person today? And sometimes your choices aren't the greatest, but it keeps you sane, maybe. Um, But you got to make the right choices. I mean, and to stay at that highest level, we were. I mean, uh, from I had one conversation with my coach. Anson for early on the team, he's the North Carolina coach, and we had a training camp in uh, in California, and the, it was around Christmas time, and the team wasn't really that fit, and he was sitting there, and I was like, "What's the matter?" He's like, "Well, the team, you know, is not fit." I'm like, "Well, it's the holidays." He's like, "No, you can't take a break. You have to make fitness your life, a part of your life." And I was like, you know, I was in college at the time, and I was like, you oh, know, whatever. That moment changed my life, and fitness was always. Part the, of your life. The career, like backbone of my career. Yeah, because how would you know as a young person? You would just you assume don't. that you should. Like relax during the holidays, right? Take a break. Um, but it was new, and you realize that's the difference. If you want to make it, you want to play at that this level. This is what you need. I've to met do. so many aspiring and really supposedly close to like Olympians, and when you dig in and you start asking them questions, you hear the same. Well, I wanted to party a little, more, right? Like it was that was There's, the difference. They had the athletic ability. Yeah. They were so close to. It's, it's here. It's the mental side, and and it's really the strength of the player. You know, because there's a lot of times you're just batted down. You're, you know, things aren't going well. You got to work hard. You're, you know, you're tired. Um, it's not easy. Um, players are trying to take your spot, and you're trying to build the team at the same time. So definitely, the mental side is, and that's why when you get the elite athletes and those success, successful teams, that's the difference in the yeah. mentality of them. How long did you guys stay on top as a team? My whole career, pretty much. <laughs> Never, never. Um. No, so we were, so World Cup 91 was the first World Cup for US, a women's yeah. soccer. We won yeah. it. Yeah. 95, we came in third. 96, we won first gold. Yeah. Uh, 99, we won the World Cup. 2000, silver. 2003, third place in World Cup. 2004, gold. 2007, third place. And then I'm out. That was it. 2010, I retired. Or 11. Nice. But it was easy. I mean, there wasn't much <laughs> competition back then. <laughs> it was easy. That's what they say. <laughs> It was um, awesome. Yeah. What, what no, you, but it was amazing. It was amazing, and to be around, like even with with you, around the same like minded people that are going to do this tomorrow, they they have that in their 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 brains. It's working fun that. to be around, and like, it, yeah. it's it's like it creates yeah. this energy. I agree. You know, it's, yeah, it's energy givers. Everybody's an energy giver, yeah. and they're fired up, and and that's why you want to find something where you belong with, you know, and yeah. and that team was something that gave an amazing energy. community. Yeah, it's awesome. So um, why do you think you guys uh, crushed it versus, like, the men's team not performing as well as you over that decade plus? Yeah, well, I think uh, for the women's game was new. I mean, we started in 80, it started in 85, and we, the group of us, like 10 of us, joined in 87 and stayed on for 17 years together. I think that had to do with it. The women's game was still pretty new. So we're all, the rest of the world, we're all starting at the same level. On the men's side, the rest of the world's been playing for a while, and then the Americans are trying to catch in there. So I think that has to do with a little bit. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think there's a magic <laughs> potion in that. I think on the women's side, like I said, we started equally, and we became a team that was won the first thing. So then we remained at top, you know, trying to be the best constantly. It wasn't like we're always trying to get up there. And it's not easy to be at the top, but it's nicer. You know, so I think we had that mentality from the start from our coach, Anson Dorrance, who put that into our brains that you guys be the best in the world. And he had us believe it over and over again. So believing it. Believing it constantly. Yep. And then working to it. I mean, you got to work. And have an easy competition. <laughs> well, funny, they're like, back in the day, they're like, well, you guys want, we, I mean, it wasn't easy, but they're like, you don't lose. And we lost games, but in practice, we lost every day. Right. So it, the training is what trained us to handle the, the bad right. days, the losses. I mean, we had a 4v4 tournament, which we loved to play, and I lived in a house of four girls. We were um, all on different teams. My team ended up winning the 4v4 tournament. 
you, you could hear a pin drop in my house until they got over the fact that they lost in practice that day. Nice. So those are, that's the practice, kind of mentality. Yeah, practice at a level that is as high as... Exactly. As, right. That's where we push each other to be right. better. Love it. And then, and then what did you do in those days where you were like, I just don't feel like going out and running today. I don't yeah. feel like doing the workout. I don't feel like playing today. Well, it, there's definitely those days, and there's those days that you do it, and it's probably pretty mediocre that day but then there was days there's like okay I don't want to do this but I got to do this this is what I love this is what I want um, and these are the days that you got to get over and like I said having a team and teammates help you get over that quite a bit I heard uh, some Olympians some cyclists have said to me you know what the trick they use is you know what I got to go out and ride five or six hours today I don't feel like doing it. I'm just gonna ride 30 minutes 30 minutes turns into an hour, an hour turns into two, yeah. it turns into five, they get it done. That, you know, that's a little part of it. And, and to me, it's always doing something doing something instead of nothing. And we, right. we had these fitness tests, and some of them were like, I mean, some of the tests were like 10 minutes long because you just had to run and rest, run and rest. And I'm like, well, I can do that for 10 minutes today. Right. I can, can, get, ten, I can get 10 minutes. You can get yeah, 10 minutes in, you can yeah. get 30 minutes in. And then you're like, oh, I don't feel so bad. No, you, you push it. Let's boil down so the three lessons for, for the takeaways. Yeah. One is, you said, I think, surround yourself with... Amazing people. Yeah, belong to something that, that has like-mindedness and um, strong. I mean, our team was strong with women that wanted to be the best. Um, and that's such a great atmosphere to be a part of. Uh, fit for life. Fit for life. I, I think that's such a great message for anybody. I mean, whether you're a part of a team or not, it, it makes you feel good. It's something that will prolong your health. and, and uh, You just it, feel better. You're happier. You're nicer better. to be around. I mean, the it's, whole thing, right? It's, it's, it makes things easier, What you, all the things you want to do. If you want to play with your kids, if you want to go walk, hike with someone that, you know, you're able to do it and not feeling tired. And the third one? Have fun. Have fun. You got to have fun. I mean, whatever you do, there's got to be some joy in it because then you, you don't want to get out of bed. Well, you don't know. I was just in Sparta, Greece. I was with a preeminent professor yeah. and I was asking him for like, what did they live by? And of the Five or six things he gave me, those were three of them. Really? So you're a Spartan. We, yes. <laughs> you're awesome. Yes. Welcome back. I don't know. Is that what you say? <laughs> sure. Welcome, <laughs> back. Welcome back is good. Welcome back. Yeah. So awesome, right? So I, I just want to start off that being, I was a soccer player. I played soccer in college. Like her accomplishments are just amazing. And I lo- one of the things that I love most that she said was she talked about like, you wake up and you've got to go to practice. You've just got to work this hard. So I think, you know, a lot of people feel that, you know, the, the top level athletes, like it's just innate. They were just born that way and like gave a little bit of effort. But I think we have to remember that these people, like they hit the grind, man, they yeah. go. And she's one of them. Yeah. And, and, and really quite humble too. Like when, yeah. when Joe said, um, were you always a great soccer player? She goes, I, uh, I was always a good athlete. Like, you know, like she didn't say, I, yes, I was the greatest soccer player in the world, but she, she just like had to acknowledge it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, a pretty, I'm a pretty good athlete. Well, right. I, but I think that maybe be difference a little bit between being an individual athlete yeah. and being a team, team. sport. Sure, absolutely, guy, yeah. Mm-hmm. Guy, gal, whatever. Yep. But, you know, where, where team is more important than the yep. individual, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, you, exactly. You, you tend to promote the team. Yeah. And not yourself. Right. Well, and I love that part where there was a part where Joe said, well, what happens when you have a bad day? And she said, well, then I've got my team. Yeah. yeah. You know, the team sort of helps lift her up and, and, and to everybody, I'm sure, on the yeah, team. Yeah. yeah. Right. And L- it lifts you up on the tough days from the ground and right. on the really good days helps you get to an even higher level. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But it, it gets back to the responsibility, right? So when, yeah. when, you're, when you're in a responsible position and being a team member, that, that is automatic responsibility. And so now you have commitment, you have responsibility and you have loyalty to the team, you have to keep going. Mm -hmm. Because then it's not about you. It's about even on your worst day, maybe you're doing better than everybody else, right? So you've got to get in there. And they need you regardless, whether you're doing good, bad, or indifferent. You still have to be there. Yeah. There's a little bit of context I want to create about something, too. Um, So Joe had Courtney uh, on the phone. And uh, Courtney was a really yeah. great soccer player. Yeah. She was the captain of her team at right. Penn, Penn State. State. So, I mean, this, she's a very elite soccer player. And the uh, the astonishment on her part, like, you're talking to who? Right. Like, so just, just to get how how big a deal this is. I mean, Courtney, who's one of the great soccer players of uh, NCAA, is is looking at Christine Lilly as an absolute idol. And, and, well, know, she should. It's, a, it's another whole... The next step level, up, yeah. Well, and, yeah and, Chris, multiple steps and Christine up. talked about Joe. You know, asked why that success was there, and she said, "Well, we're the OG. Like, you know, that they started women's soccer, really, and that she and Maya Ham and um, I'm trying to think Wombach. of uh, Wombach, that they were there for an entire generation. Like, they were there for you know 16, 20, 23 years in her case. That's that's incredible. You know, to um, to have inspired 
you know, women's soccer, the Americans are as good as anyone in the world, and and that's that's really because of these ladies or better or better. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. I'm 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 a Canadian. Yeah, as that's, a lot of oh, people that's know. right. And that's been a great rivalry, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but that's been a great rivalry where Canada and the U.S. Um, in women's, we're at the top of the soccer world, and it's been really neat to watch. Well, you're right, though. They've inspired a movement. Right. Yeah. I mean, and it came along with Title IX and the rest of it. And at the right time and place, probably, you know, a great again, if Sephra was here, she would talk about the environment that it was born fertile soil and fertile soil that it was born in. Maybe mention the Cornell as well. So I'm trying to stand in there for a little bit. But it was the right time and place. And then they they were there and they they're the heads of it. You know, they're the driving force. But they've inspired every little girl. Yeah. You know, used to be want to be a princess or a ballerina or whatever. They all want to play soccer. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, you go to any field in any city, town in America on a Saturday, Sunday, whatever. There's just hundreds of kids and a lot of them are girls out just playing soccer. It's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I think it speaks to the importance of, I mean, not just girls having role models, but kids having really healthy role models that aren't just physically doing things that are amazing, but mentally are right there with it as well. I think that that's just so key for our youth. Here's also where she could be a role model or is a role model for us adults. We talk a lot about the kids and things like that. When she said about, um, you know, that they, they weren't particularly fit because it was uh, Christmas holidays and the coach said, you got to always be fit. And that's something that a friend told me ages ago. Mm-hmm. The idea of, um, uh, hey, you want to go climb that mountain? Yeah, you know, I need a little bit of time to get in shape, but then I will. Why can't you just go tomorrow? And wouldn't it be great to just always be that fit? You know, you're not losing weight to get into your tuxedo for a wedding. You're just fit. And mm-hmm. you're, 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 you know, so when somebody calls you tomorrow with an idea, you can say, sure. Well, I love that idea, just being ready for life fit always. for life, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Yeah, right. sure. And exactly. I'm going to, exactly. uh, with your permission, I'll take a quick uh, segue to a little military story. Absolutely. Right, so once How would I deny a, that? Well, <laughs> once upon a time, uh, when I was a young ranger, what they used to do, we have what's called block leave. It's holiday, but everybody, all 600 people have to go at the same time. That way it's easy to manage the unit, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody goes away for the same 10 days. They all come back. We always had to come back at noon on a Sunday. First thing we had to take was a urinalysis test. Oh, yeah, yeah. Second mm-hmm. thing we did was some surprise physical event, and they were brutal, and they were long. I can remember one time we had to go out for a road march and you know, put your rucksack on and go, and it was going to be an 8- to 10-mile march. No big deal. We all line up, we get ready, and the commander says, oh, I forgot to tell you, I want every fifth guy on a stretcher. And so now you're carrying it through the woods for 8, 10 miles after you've been on vacation. The point was you had better stay in shape right. during the holidays because right. today we'd start. Not a good day to work. To, yeah, yeah. So off. you're here today. Today's day one, and we're, we're ready to go today. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, I think that that speaks to, I think it's really important to have goals when, you know, in particular right now as we're talking about being physically active. But I also think it's important to remember intention. Like I'm doing this for me yeah, so why that am I doing yeah, this? exactly. Why is my ultimate goal? Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, that it can it can sort of get rooted inside of you. So again, it's not just like, well, I'll be active when I have a wedding to go to, so I need to fit into a tux or to fit into my wedding dress or whatever it is. But it's just like a longevity of that yeah. internal goal. And she talked about that, the idea that the, it wasn't just about the next game. Like they were about right. becoming the best soccer team yep. in the world. Yep. And that, you know, that goes a lot further than this practice or that game or that season. It was it was a much bigger picture that they were all part of. Right. Well, she had her she had her points, right? You know, and one was the fit for life, two was to be happy, you know, find joy in what you're doing. Sure, yeah. And certainly uh, winning is always you know a lot more fun than losing. So yeah. when, once you get that and we've all talked about the endorphins and the rest of it once once you get going and you get small victories it's easier to get to the next step and the other one again we've heard a million times but again just said a little bit differently is to surround yourself with like-mindedness the people who have the same goals same identity same purpose and and in this case again it was a collection of women who wanted who represented their sport but represented a nation and and did it it, you know uh, flawlessly Mm -hmm. yeah and and like you say, all coming together at that same time and driving each other further and higher. And it really... And, and she's still involved, right? Yeah. She talks yeah. about her camps and yeah. uh, right. I guess the Decena girls mm-hmm. are going to be at camp this summer. There you go. Well, we'll have them come back on and tell us how it went. Yeah, it would be great. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by FitAid, recovery for your active lifestyle. Each ice cold can of FitAid contains key ingredients like BCAAs, glutamine, turmeric, Omega-3s and more. Race dirty, recover clean with FitAid. Visit ForTheFitAid.com and sign up to win an amazing grand prize package from FitAid and Spartan. Monthly Spartan prize packs and more. FitAid, recovery for your active lifestyle. 
Thanks for listening to Spartan Up. If you like our show, spread the word. Then subscribe wherever you watch or listen so you don't miss an episode. We'll be back here every Tuesday with Joe and the team sharing interviews with high achievers. Then stay on track with quick hits of motivation and advice. Wednesdays, Spartan Mind with Dr. Laura Pence. Thursdays, Spartan Way with Zach Evanesh. Sundays, Spartan Health with Dr. Nada Milosevic. And if you're looking for even more, we've got tons of articles at spartan.life.com. See you next week.